All right, it's uh, it's 5:30, so I'll call this meeting of the North City Council Finance Committee to order. Um, just want to remind folks that uh, we're going to we'll read the title of the legislation. If you have comments, the administrator will first speak, and then um, if you have comments you'd like to make, feel free to come to the podium and make your comments directed towards the chair. Um, we just have one piece of legislation on our agenda this evening, and it is to consider resolution number four. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, members present are Mr. Bub, Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marby, and Mr. Blake. Um, but our first and only piece of legislation on our agenda is to consider resolution number 1444, appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. Uh, Ms. Gilks. And this is a grant that we were, um, the city was awarded from the Ohio EPA. We submitted a proposal earlier in the year to um, purchase two of these big belly trash, um, solar trash compactors that will be placed on Courthouse Square. We also have in this proposal um, cameras for TJ Evans and Horace Hill Park. We have five cameras and associated license uh, software and licenses for those cameras. Those cameras are going to be tied into the police department. So we're in sync with, you know, the, the cameras in the parks will be visible by the police department. The police department selected the cameras, so you know, we're all on the same page and it makes sense. But what I'm here for is for the um, 17,695.29, um, we will be reimbursed that amount by the Ohio EPA. Then um, David Rose is going to present the request for the match, and that match will be coming out of um, capital improvement. And these are similar to like the ones that the city of Cleveland used, these solar? Yes, yeah. absolutely the same. Yeah. I looked on the website, it looks pretty nice. So. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions for Ms. Gills? <coughs> Make a motion. Motion by Mrs. Floyd. Second. Mr. Bob. Any further questions uh, from the committee? Mr. Goss. How, how many cameras and what parts? I'm sorry. Um, five cameras for two parts, Horns Hill and TJ. And they were selected because we have a dumping problem. Due to, you know, they're both, they have secluded areas and people dumped all types of debris. And we've got a big problem with appliances and furniture and big items. So Thank that's you. why those two were selected. Any further questions from the committee? Questions from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor of this on the full council signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you very much, Ms. Gills. And that concludes our agenda for finance and ways and means is next. Okay, it's 535. We'll call this Ways and Means Committee meeting to order. Those present, myself, Ryan Bob, Doug Marvin, Jeremy Blake. First item this evening is Ordinance 14 13. This is an ordinance levying an additional income tax of one quarter of one percent for the purpose of raising general operating revenue, specifically and exclusively dedicated to the general construction, reconstruction, resurfacing, and repair of streets, roads, bridges, and sidewalks, and all taxable salaries, wages, commissions, and other compensation is set forth herein, as well as on all taxable net profits earned by businesses, professions, or other activities is set forth herein, and providing for the collection and enforcement thereof. With that being said, Mayor Hall, the floor is yours. Sure, thank you. It's kind of a continuation of, remember a few weeks ago, uh, our engineer, Mr. Moorhead, brought up the uh, quandary in with trying to get our streets uh, back to shape and paved and uh, could cost a little bit north of $2 million, almost $2.2 .2 million a year um, after they did a uh, scan and a, uh, a further investigation on the streets to maintain them, keep them going. Uh, we looked at a uh, property levy uh, that would raise about 1.6 million and then uh, at that same time council some council members reached out and said what would that look like in an income tax levy uh, that's the piece that we're bringing in tonight uh, at 0.15% we have a 1.75% income tax which at 1.75% is very low especially with a city of this size um, uh, they usually range the heat of one and a half percent, but again, they're fifth our size, all the way up to two and a half percent generally across Ohio. Um, this would raise it to 1.9 percent and uh, raise.
raise approximately the same, about $1.6 million. <coughs> Excuse me. We surely know that's a short of what that annual maintenance for those streets would uh, uh, dictate or ask for, but it, uh, it's surely a good starting place and can get us uh, going in the right direction with the streets. Um, there's two pieces here on the agenda, and uh, our law director, Mr. Sasson, can surely speak to that of the necessity of the two different pieces on the same issue. Thank you. Thank you. I'll open the conversation up to any members in the committee. Excuse me. Does anyone on the committee have any questions, concerns? Doug Marmee, go ahead. Um, my first question is, uh, why are we including bridges and sidewalks if we're really looking to try to help with just the streets? Uh, part of it is to, to not uh, cornhole this too tight or make it too narrow that we wouldn't be able to improve areas. I guess I'd hate to have collections and have a bridge. Uh, it, let me step back a minute. The last two bridges we've done are, have been in excess of a million dollars a piece. We're fortunate to get state capital improvement dollars to repair those. If we needed a bridge repaired and did not have the dollars <coughs> to do that at the state level, provided by the state level, uh, We'd hate to have money sitting there that we could potentially use, but have a bridge closed that we're unable to fund. So I think the focus we know is to stay on repaving, but we want it wide enough to cover other aspects of streets to keep traffic flowing. Uh, Mansfield had a similar uh, project, and their legislation was so narrow that they have the dollars now, but unable to spend them because they do not have other dollars that are other required improvements to the streets, i.e. the intersections, um, uh, wheelchair access ramps, uh, certain improvements that must be done mandated at those intersections. Their legislation is not allowing that, so while they have dollars to pave streets, they don't have the dollars to do the other adequate improvements that are required. So uh, again, they're kind of in a corner there with those dollars. So I don't think there's any intentions. Certainly, this city, uh, we rank number five in the state in number of bridges. We have 89 bridges in these city limits. Uh, 58 of those are, I believe, about half of them are maintained by the state on state routes, but the other half are maintained by uh, this body in the city. So it is a large part of our transportation system in the city limits, and I think we should really want to include it. Uh, uh, obviously, we wouldn't be spending money on bridges we didn't need to, though. But the purpose of this is to catch back up with our street repair, correct? That's uh, the primary, yeah. That's the that's primary right. purpose yep. Yep. of this levy. So why are we deviating from that and keeping it open? It's almost like saying, well, we can just open it up in case we need new fire trucks. You know, or whatever. Right? Well, it's like, I guess, yeah. I, I guess, you know, if if it's truly the purpose is truly for repair of streets and paving, mm -hmm. then why aren't we not calling it that? I, again, if a bridge went down, I think that would take priority over repaving the street. So to move traffic throughout the city. And I would hope that our current capital improvements is set forth, and that you know that if we can do that, whereas this is to increase street paving is what we've been told mm -hmm. and the whole purpose of this is to increase paving not to supplement our capital improvements that is already set forth to try to take care of a bridge or something along sure. well, it's still a street related project though it's not fire trucks or something just open wide open to capital improvements so did you have another question Doug? Um, you said you had two yeah uh, I guess that it's, you know, the whole thing, um, as far as the reason why we have to increase revenue uh, in order to take care of our streets, um, have there been any other uh, suggestions? You know, we, it, it was stated earlier in the year that we were going to ask employees to come up with some solutions to our funding issues. Right now, we're currently dipping into our budget stabilization fund as if it were an, an unappropriated ballot or balance. Um, we're also uh, impacting possibly our future bond ratings and our ability to borrow money because of that budget stabilization going down. Um, what are we doing uh, besides asking taxpayers to pay more money to take care of our financial woes? Uh, Mr. Chairman? The, uh, since day one to come in here, this administration has built inefficiencies for two and a half years. Um, it, uh, at the end of the day, um, we've shaved over $100,000 a year off the health insurance contract with the, the health department. Uh, we have got our uh, utilities under control and saved 
fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year on that for our electric bills, reaching out to the gas bills when those contracts come up that the previous administration put us in. Uh, not a bad thing, I'm not saying do they just have to expire and then we can look at the uh, reshop that. Uh, we're working from many directions in each department for Two years ago, has worked on efficiencies within those departments. Many people in the departments are wearing several hats, doing multitasking, which is all good. Auditor's department would be one example. We used to have a staff of 10 as a staff of four now. Um, now, yes, technology does some of that, but we also have several people, some people in that department doing uh, multiple jobs. Uh, as you trim down and move on, um, uh, of course, staffing is a low, the lowest it's been in the city. Uh, we probably, how many years ago, had uh, 150 more employees, so uh, staffing is low. At a point, you can get so low to where you can't even get uh, production done, I think, in the city. So we have uh, reached out and tried to do efficient things. We're getting as many grants as you can see, as sure as you get those across the council's uh, chambers here. On Monday nights, we talk about grants, uh, try to get things done from that direction. So. Um, we are uh, we're building inefficiencies all we can, and there's just nowhere else to go. So we're done with efficiencies, you're saying? I'm saying we're done, but I think we've looked at most of the large dollar item efficiencies that, we, that can be saved. Uh, a, a dollar's a dollar, and we look at every one of those, and constantly uh, work on those all the time. But if you're going to look for a fifty or $100,000 savings in an apartment, I, it's not going to be there. So I'll testify to that as I work to the budget 24-7. Okay, then how are we going to operate next year with a $300,000, uh, I mean, we dipped into the budget stabilization for almost that amount, mm -hmm. and with the pay raises that are going to occur, and then, you know, now we, we're getting further and further behind on this, and we're trying to throw money at a problem. A lot of what we're doing is trying to get economic development rolling in the city, get tax revenues up on in that angle too. So bringing businesses in, trying to uh, get more jobs, create an environment to attract more jobs. Uh, that's really, at the end of the day, the, the large story of downtown. We have a business district that's not being utilized to its highest potential. If you can create that and make that into a uh, current day shopping district that should have the revenue cash flows that it should be, it will have, the tax revenues will come up with that. So um, it's uh, from different angles that you go that way. So we're in the uh, budget stabilization fund now because we need to be, not because it's convenient. So if, uh, if, if it's time to go back <coughs> and uh, cut out services in the city, uh, then we'll have to talk about that at that time, but I don't think we're quite there yet. So, Okay. But necessary services, let me clarify that. Jeremy, did you yes, have a question? Yes, go ahead, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have my understanding, if you just refresh my memory, mm -hmm. my understanding is that, like, the because a lot of questions will come from the community, mm -hmm. we start talking about, let's say, the license plate permissive tax, um, the funds that uh, Brian presented on uh, a few weeks ago, those funds are currently being used for streets. But yet, they're, they're for like main thoroughfares, and we're not even able to touch the neighborhood roads because of the upkeep and the maintenance of the main thoroughfares and things of that nature. Is that is that a, a, a correct statement to say? Would you say? Uh, let me clarify that maybe a little bit. Uh, we have license plate permissive tax uh, that has gone up uh, four times in about 30 years during the same time the price of asphalt has almost gone up four times. So we've gone from $21 a ton to just short of $70 a ton. Uh, so you don't get more miles paved because of the rising cost of asphalt. Uh, gasoline excise tax, when you pump your gas at the stations within the city limits, we do get a piece of that. Those have to be used for roads. Yes, they have to be focused on that. We have, uh, that's, uh, they cannot be used for anything else within the city other than road related items. We also reach out over state capital improvement dollars, and as I previously mentioned, use that for bridges. We use it on main streets where uh, we can reach out to LCATs and get some funding sometimes, but those will not be available for neighborhoods. They're used for your main thoroughfares where you're going to have tens of thousands of car pass at a daytime. They're looking at um, providing the dollars and get the best impact out of them, obviously. So uh, it's uh, it can be, but we're also working to keep the roads up that Brian Moorhead is working with a fine line to keep our roads maintained. If you'll see out here, West, Palm, West Main Street was paved a couple years ago, weathered the winter very well. 
Um, it's, it's in great shape. And uh, as you notice, some of you saw his presentation. If we can catch that at that eight to 10 year mark, then repaving is all we have to do. Again, to pave a mile of an average wet street is about ninety to one hundred and ten thousand dollars a mile, just to resurface, not to do any uh, underneath repairs. So, if we can catch it before it's mandated at that point, we're saving dollars. But that's what we're trying to get ahead of. But to get into those neighborhood uh, uh, streets, we're going to need more revenue. I mean, that's really obvious. So. And we're fully aware there are neighborhoods that have needed paid for years. I mean, we know that well. But uh, if you're seeing prices go up everywhere when you shop uh, across this community, it's because of the rising expenses. I don't believe uh, Walmart or Target or Kroger or anybody out there wants to charge more just because to make more profit, they're doing it. Competition's tight, they're doing it because their expenses are going up. But we're not immune to those expensive increases. <laughs> Uh, just as an example, I know in my ward on Beacon Road, I mean, there was a holistic approach done with that project. I mean, it was just not just the road, but the, the curve, the sidewalks and curves and everything had to be done. And my understanding was it's because it sits on a clay, uh, under, uh, I don't know the correct terms, but, uh, but there was a need to use streets and sidewalks, a holistic approach. And I think the same holistic approach was done on Granville Road, if I ever. I believe that project is done. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, can I speak to that, Mr. Chairman? The, uh, the uh, Beacon Road, obviously we have clay throughout the community in different places. Beacon Road is a, a peak that is a big clay cliff up there. We constantly were putting asphalt on that and kind of throwing money away almost, but you do have to patch it. It would slide off that asphalt, <coughs> slide off that clay. So uh, finally getting that project done, it had to be a complete project. It needed curbs. They're not for looks. They're to hold that road together. It needed to get a new bed of gravel put under before we paved it so that uh, you can get some of that clay out of there. And uh, so long term, you don't want to spend uh, $200,000 and have to go back and do $50,000 of work in a couple of years. That project was north of $300,000, and then we expected the last uh, long term because that's what was needed in that particular part of the city. Thank you. Do you have one more question? Go ahead, Jeremy. Um, I didn't have a question, but uh, I just want to say that uh, I think that. Um, you know, considering the funds that are currently being used, it's time that we finally get out into some of our neighborhoods. And I think that a, the proposal being forward, being brought forward, will allow additional funds to do that. And so, um, so I'll make a I'll make a motion uh, to move this on to full council. Okay, I have a motion on the floor by Blake. Do I have a second? If not, I will second that motion also to move this on to full council. Is there anybody else, any other council members that would like to uh, speak to this or ask the mayor any questions? Anybody from the audience? <coughs> if not, I have a motion on the floor by Blake, a second by myself, Bob. All those in favor of moving, moving this on the full council signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion passes 2-1. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next item on the agenda this evening is Resolution 14-46. It's a resolution providing for the submission to the electors of the City of Newark, Ohio. The question is the passage of a 0.15% additional income tax levy dedicated to general construction, reconstruction, resurfacing, or repair of streets, roads, bridges, and sidewalks within the municipality. Law Director Sasson, would you like to speak to that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could just very briefly, these are both companion pieces of legislation. If you read them independently, the language might seem a little bit odd, but it's the language that's required by statute for passing an income tax of this sort. You know, you'll notice that the 1413, which you just passed on to full council, says levying an additional income tax. Um, Technically, you are levying an income tax, but it, if, if this passes, but it can't be imposed and enforced unless it's adopted and affirmed by the voters. Um, that's what Resolution 14-49 does. It basically says in there, again, kind of strange language where it says uh, that this council previously passed Ordinance 14-13. Um, saying we're levying an additional tax. 
but then directing the Board of Elections to put that question on the ballot to be affirmed or disaffirmed by the voters. It has to reference that previous ordinance because before this resolution can go to the Board of Elections, that ordinance has to pass. Now it can pass one minute before the resolution passes, still counts as being previously passed. It's just that when this comes to council, you can't pass 1446 unless 14-13's already passed. So kind of goofy procedural issues, but there you are. Thank you. Does anyone from this committee have any questions or comments regarding 14-46? I'm just present. Or Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to move it on to full council. Um, and I do just have a few comments to say. I, I think that the people, um, I mean, this is basically telling the people, you know, you have a choice. You know, we, we all know that we have issues with our roads. We all know that we have issues with uh, uh, wanting to get out into the neighborhood streets. I mean, every, my last camp, all of our last campaigns, we heard that. We heard it over and over. You know, the neighborhood streets need some attention to them. So, you know, needing additional funds for those neighborhood streets is what uh, we'll be presenting to the voters. And uh, the voters will have a choice, you know, to either support it or not support it. And so basically, we're just moving this on to the voters to be able to make that decision. And so I, I do make the motion to move it on. Okay. I have a motion on the floor by Blake. Is there a second? Um, if not, I will um, offer a second to this resolution. Does anyone from the, any other council members have any additional questions or comments? Or anyone from the audience? If not, a motion on the floor by Blake, a second by Bob. All those in favor of moving resolution 14 46 on the full council signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. aye. Motion will pass two to one. Thank you, everyone, for your time. With that, we will stand adjourned. Capital improvements is next. Okay, uh, Capital Improvements Committee's order. Present are uh, Mr. Rat, Mr. Roletta, Mr. Cross, myself, and Mr. Uh, Johnson. Uh, we have one item. Resolution number 1445, appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. Mr. Rose. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's always nice to follow Barbara Gilks. She explained to you in the Finance Committee, this is the matching part, this is the city's part. We're willing to take this out of capital improvements to make the uh, uh, compactors and the uh, cameras uh, a doable thing. And the majority of it is being paid for by the grant. This is our portion. Motion. Second. Are there any questions? Any questions from the audience? Motion to move the full council by cost. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say the same. And that concludes our capital improvements. Thank you.